China with a population of 1.4 billion, connected by trains and high-speed rail across the vast land. The annual spring festival travel rush around the Lunar New Year is known as a spectacular human migration on Earth. In the imagination of most people, China's railway system should be very profitable. But recent financial reports show that China Railway Group Limited is suffering severe losses with a debt of up to 6 trillion Chinese yuan. This article will discuss why 1.4 billion people cannot support China Railway, which is a state-owned enterprise managed solely by the Chinese government. It is responsible for operating the general train and high-speed railway systems, with a total railway length of over 150,000 kilometers, including the world's longest high-speed rail network. CR has more than 2 million employees, and the overall scale of the enterprise is quite large. But the extent of its losses and debts is also astonishing. According to the latest financial report in 2022, CR's net losses for the first three quarters reached 94.7 billion yuan, pushing the total debt past the 6 trillion yuan mark, with a debt-to-asset ratio of as high as 66%. To further understand the operational crisis of CR, we can divide it into three main problems. Why are they losing money? Why are they in debt? And are there any solutions? Before diving into these three issues, let's take a look at the development history of China's railways. Going back to 1876, a British capital group built the Wusun Railway in Shanghai. And at that time, the Chinese people had animosity towards the large moving blocks of metal that is a train, believing that it would dry up the growth of crops and livestock. However, they quickly realized how great this mode of transportation was. Borrowing the powerful transport efficiency of trains, it quickly took root and developed in China. In 1881, the Qin Dynasty built the Tangsu Railway, and in 1912, the Republic of China government included railway lines in its major national construction plan. Although the development of railways slowed during the Chinese Civil War, it entered a period of rapid development after the founding of the People's Republic of China. In 2008, China officially entered the era of high-speed railways, among them the Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway, which connects the Beijing-Tianjin-Hebei region and the Yangtze River Delta region is known as the most profitable high-speed railway line in China due to its high annual occupancy rate of up to 80%. While the railway mileage has increased rapidly, in order to improve management efficiency, the Chinese government carried out organizational restructuring in 2019, setting up the China State Railway Group to replace the original Ministry of Railways and China Railway Corporation. Under the plan in Beijing, the National Railway has become the world's second largest railway network and the longest high-speed rail system in terms of total mileage. This huge railway system can be called China's pride, but its financial performance is relatively bleak. Let's start with the loss figures. In 2020, China State Railway had a loss of about 55 billion yuan, and in 2021, it had a loss of 49.8 billion yuan. In just the first three quarters of 2022, it has incurred a whopping loss of 94.7 billion yuan. Even the supposedly most profitable Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway lost 1 billion yuan in the first half of 2022. Faced with difficult financial performance, the National Railway Group is playing the epidemic card. Despite implementing numerous prevention and control measures, the group's passenger transport revenue has decreased by nearly 40% compared to the same period last year, which has dragged down the overall revenue. At first glance, this may seem reasonable, but if we look at the financial reports of the National Railway and its predecessor before the epidemic, we will find that the situation is not simple. In the first three quarters of 2017, the Chinese railway system suffered a loss of nearly 1 billion yuan. In the following year of 2018, many railway bureaus under the National Railway did not make a profit, and the overall revenue was also in a deficit. In other words, the epidemic only exacerbated the losses of the National Railway. In fact, China's railway transportation has already lost its ability to make a profit this year. The key reason behind this is related to railway operations. Railway operation is an unusual business. When the revenue of a small and medium-sized private enterprise declines, the first step is likely to be to reduce operating costs. However, railway companies cannot do this. Looking at the costs and revenues, railways make money by carrying passengers and freight. The more volume they transport, the more revenue they earn. However, the costs they need to pay, such as hardware maintenance and comprehensive personnel expenses, are difficult to reduce, as the latter is based on the increase of railway mileage. Some people may see the problem here. 
When a country's railway is built from scratch, the first railways are usually those that connect the areas with the most passenger traffic or the highest freight volume, which require the largest lines. Railway companies in this stage earn a lot of money. However, as the railway network becomes denser, there are some lines that exist only to serve people in remote areas. The passenger volume of these routes is very low, but the overall cost of the railway company continues to increase due to the growing mileage. Therefore, when a national railway assumes the responsibility of caring for the entire population, it is easy to deviate from the traditional market and become an increasingly difficult to profit company. In 2018, before the pandemic, only 6 out of 18 railway bureaus of China Railway in the neighboring area could generate profits, while the remaining bureaus still had to bear fixed operating costs, despite not meeting the target volume. In 2020, China Railway faced an even harsher situation, with total operating revenue dropping by nearly 10% due to the impact of the pandemic, but operating revenue only decreased by 3%. The operating costs of China Railway in 2021 increased instead of decreased, causing the company to face even greater losses. The reason behind this is the same as before. From 2020 to 2021, the total length of the National Railway increased by 4,000 kilometers, directly leading to a significant increase in operating costs. The total debt of China Railway has exceeded 6 trillion yuan, which may be different from what everyone thinks. The biggest reason for the current expansion of debt is actually the construction of high-speed railways. The development of China's high-speed railways can be traced back to 2008, when the global financial crisis broke out. In order to revive the economy, the Chinese government vigorously promoted infrastructure such as high-speed railways. The Beijing-Shanghai High-Speed Railway created considerable profits shortly after its establishment, which encouraged other local governments to vigorously pursue high-speed railway lines. In the imagination of local officials, high-speed railways can promote local economic development, which is indeed true, but whether high-speed railways can make money or not is not part of their plan. The fact proves that most of China's high-speed railway lines are currently in a loss-making state. According to data from 2015, the average passenger volume per kilometer of the Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway is 20 times that of the Lanzhou-Yuanqi line, but the construction cost is not much different. Therefore, those high-speed railway lines with low passenger volume cannot repay the huge construction costs based on revenue. The money earned each year is not even enough to pay the interest. Under the premise of insisting on operation, these lines can only rely on government subsidies or new debt to pay off old debt to survive. Causing the debt of the National Railway Group to rise sharply, the current total mileage of China's high-speed railway exceeds 40,000 kilometers, and it is expected to build an additional 2,500 kilometers before the end of 2023. Despite the expanding debt, why does the National Railway continue to build railways? This is related to the complex positioning of railways in national construction. The existence of many national railway groups is not only for profit on paper, but also bears the significant responsibility of improving national economic development and the convenience of national transportation. Therefore, for the Chinese government, railways must continue to be built. In the post-pandemic era, to stimulate economic recovery, the construction of high-speed railways cannot stop. However, as we mentioned earlier, the construction of high-speed railways is expensive and its enormous debt will affect the national economy. This creates a relatively contradictory situation. Previously, the Chinese State Council issued an order to local governments to promote high-speed railway construction while asking them to reconsider the passenger volume of new routes. Similar situations have also occurred in other countries. The French National Railway Company is an example. As an industry pioneer, France launched a high-speed railway construction plan earlier than many other countries in the 1970s. The current French National Railway not only leads the domestic railway network, but also undertakes many countries' technical business. However, even such a large railway company is currently burdened with 24 billion euros of debt. If the government had not intervened, their original debt would have been as high as 60 billion euros. In summary, the losses and debts of China Railway Group are related to the rapid expansion of railways, mainly high-speed rail. There are too many lines that cannot make a profit, and the operating costs of railways cannot be reduced, which ultimately leads to a significant financial burden. However, considering the potential benefits of railway transportation to the country, some degree of loss in debt is acceptable in reality. Nonetheless, the continuous increase in China Railway Group's debt has the potential to affect the country's economic progress. For the Chinese government, whether to continue building railways to boost the economy, or to stop and deal with debt has become the most critical issue. 
For those interested in this topic, feel free to leave a comment below and share your thoughts. If you enjoy our channel, please subscribe, like, and share.